I found it really interesting that ever since Bernie Sanders proposed his own version of the wealth tax, the knuckleheads over at Fox Business News have been hammering away at why it's the worst thing ever. They've been bringing on billionaires to gripe about Bernie Sanders' wealth tax. And what's interesting is that it's evident that they don't really know how to criticize the wealth tax because this is something that will apply exclusively to elites. It's not going to apply to normal Americans because most Americans don't actually have wealth. So if you're Fox News and you want to make sure that you drive down support for a policy that doesn't necessarily apply to normal Americans, what do you do? Uh, you lie. You say that it actually does apply to them, when in actuality it will only apply to the mega rich. And we're not just talking about people who are well off. We're not talking about the upper class. We're talking about very, very rich people. So, former Louisiana governor and 2016 loser Bobby Jindal is going to go on Fox Business News and in an interview with Neil Cavuto explain why the wealth tax isn't actually very good for ordinary working Americans. Look, I think that Wall Street and the American people have a right to be worried about these crazy left policies. There's a problem. You know, it sounds somewhat attractive when Elizabeth Warren says, we're not going to tax you, we're just going to tax the wealthy people. We're going to do this wealth tax. It reminds me of Louisiana populace. They have a saying down here, you know, don't tax you, don't tax me, tax the guy behind the tree. And what that means is, don't worry, we're not going to raise your taxes, we'll raise the other guy's taxes. The problem with these plans is eventually, it always starts out that way. You know, the income tax was only going to be on the wealthy. These taxes only are going to be on wealthy people. And then before you know it, if you own a nice home, if you own your car, if you have some savings for retirement, before you know it, these wealth taxes are going to catch you as well because their appetite to spend is so large, they can't just tax the, the billionaires and the millionaires. They're going to tax everyday American working people as well. So I think people are right to be worried about these, these tax the wealth schemes and these crazy spending schemes. I mean, they're talking about tens of trillions of dollars of new spending. But I, think, I also think you're right. Be careful what you wish for. I think Elizabeth Warren would be easy to beat, but I'd also the thought of her as president absolutely terrifies me you know before i saw what he said and i just saw the headline i actually expected him to use a more sophisticated argument against the wealth tax i thought that he would you know use trickle down as the rationale or some platitudes about job creators but nope he literally just straight up said that this is going to apply to normal americans no it's not do you want to know why because normal americans don't have wealth, Bobby. And when you see Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax proposals, it's going to be really easy to uh, convince everyone why I'm right and Bobby Jindal is wrong. And as this chart from Cheyenne Gal of Business Insider demonstrates, both Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren's wealth taxes do not apply to households with less than $32 million in net worth. Now, if you have between $32.1 to $50 million in wealth, Bernie's plan would tax you at 1%, while Warren's plan wouldn't kick in until you have over $50 million in wealth, which is when both her and Bernie would institute a 2% wealth tax. Now, Bernie's would gradually increase, while Warren's doesn't actually jump until we get to billionaires, which is where she increases her wealth tax by one percentage point, and the highest that Bernie goes to is 8% on income over $10 billion. Now, seeing as how there's only 2,100 billionaires in existence throughout the world, to say that this wealth tax from either of the candidates will apply to, quote, American working people is a bold-faced lie. It's called a wealth tax because we are taxing wealth. People with lots and lots of wealth. So for Bobby Jindal to say that with a straight face, he's either dumb or disingenuous. Probably a little bit, a little bit of both, but I think that, you know, a policy that's literally named the wealth tax is pretty self-explanatory. It will be applicable to people with wealth. Lots and lots of wealth. Now, if you are a normal person, um, my expectation is that you saw that and you laughed because it's obviously a joke. Most people know that when we talk about a wealth tax, we're not talking about Bob who works at Walmart. We're talking about really rich people. 40% of Americans don't even have $400 in the bank for emergency expenses. 40 million workers don't even make $15 per hour. 38.1 million Americans live in poverty and this disproportionately affects people of color. 79 million Americans have problems with medical debt. 44.7 million Americans have student loan debt. The point is, a wealth tax will not affect normal Americans in a negative way, but it will affect them in a positive way. Because if we institute a wealth tax on really, really wealthy people, 
then we can use the resources that we raise with that wealth tax to increase our social safety net, uh, increase public goods, make sure that normal Americans who don't have wealth won't go bankrupt if they have a medical emergency. Make sure that you don't have to be put into death for the rest of your life if you want to go to college, if you're able to get into college. That's how the wealth tax will affect normal people. To say that this will be an increase in their taxes on their quote-unquote wealth is just laughable. It shows that Bobby Jindal doesn't really understand the economy currently and how it's tilted so heavily in favor of elites, where the tax burden has been shifted to normal Americans. So by simply saying that we're gonna have a wealth tax, what we're trying to do is reshift the tax burden back to elites because if you make more money, if you make the most money, then you should be paying the lion's share of taxes. And that includes on wealth as well. So um, what an idiotic argument. Like I genuinely believed that Bobby Jindal would come up with some other more persuasive way to argue against this, but I mean, uh, I don't know what I was expecting when it comes to Fox News and Republicans. The bar is very, very low. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you'll see a propagandist like Tucker Carlson make an argument that's a little bit more difficult to argue against, even though we know that he's lying. Like, you have to really disentangle components of his argument because he tries to appeal to that regular person. But, I mean, what we see here from Neil Cavuto and Bobby Jindal, this is just lazy hackery. It's so easy to just swat away. And quite frankly, it's laughable. The thought that he thinks that he's going to convince normal Americans that a wealth tax will apply to them is a joke. It's moronic. People don't have wealth. Elites have wealth. That's why we're taxing elites. That's why this exclusively applies to elites and not normal, normal working Americans, you dumb idiot.